Now, the last time we met tulikuwa tumefika katika castings. Yeah? We saw the process of casting, tukona mambo ya cleaning of casting, uh, process ya uh, inspections, how we clean them. Now, today I'm going to introduce a very another another a very important process ambayo inafanywa katika uh, workshop na ni filing. Yeah? Now this basically ni when you're done with your with your processes, yeah? ushakata chuma yako, ushai you have done whatever is is necessary. Then it is it is important eh, to make sure that you remove those rough edges. Eh? Is it buzz? B U uh, double R S. Eh, those are the rough edges. Eh? Okisha fanya casting. I saw. I think we saw katika ile uh, video casting. Eh? Your casting ikitoka ikona those unwanted parts. Eh? So once you remove those unwanted parts, you you are left with a, 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 an object, a solidified object, but you still have to to clean it. You still have to polish it. And we do this by uh, one of the processes ni, ni filing. So we remove uh, those unwanted uh, parts. Now, what we use uh, to do this process is a file. Uh, and a file is basically uh, a piece of metal made from high-grade steel. Uh, it has teeth. Uh, and we use these teeth now to remove uh, those edges, those pieces of metal, uh, so that we can make our metal uh, smooth. Now, one one of the now this diagram here shows the the parts of a of a, of a file. Uh, I'm sure most of us have interacted with the file. Tumayona uh, mahal, and this is the basic nini uh, of a file. The basic uh, parts of a file. Kuna ile handle lambao sana sana ni ambao. We have the part known as the tongue. The tongue is that uh, edge ambayo nengiza katika handle. We have the heel. This is that sloping edge. Uh, just nile part kwa file ambayo haina, kaina hiyo meno. Uh, it is just inside. Ile amba, um, just before. Uh, just before the tongue is in it or heel. Then we have the, the face. Uh, the face is a place where these teeth, uh, the rows of teeth are usually cut on the file. Okay? We have the edge and that is the point. Uh, ambayo, the, the far end point on the file. And then we have the cutting points. Uh, these are the points on the teeth that you will use when uh, filing. Ambayo uh, itakusaidia kutoa those uh, edges, the rough edges. Uh, and then we have the length of the file. Uh, this is basically how we determine the size of that file uh, by length. Now, how do we classify files? Uh, files are basically classified according to four major categories. Kuna uh, type of cut. Uh, how are those teeth cut uh, on the face of that file? The grade of cut. We come in a talker from rough to smooth. The same way kuna grid size katika ile sandpaper. It's the same case katika file. Uh, those menu ambao una, unapata katika file, kuna ile ambao utaitumia for rough uh, processes, mpaka ile ambao utatumia for smooth finishing processes the shape of the file and lastly the size kuna file ndogo na kuna file kubwa and this usually is uh, by determined by the length of that file now according to the uh, depending on the cut of file we can have uh, a single cut file uh, ukiangalia in this sh uh, in this diagram you only have one uh, the, the 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 teeth the, the rows of teeth are cut in only one direction now, a very important uh, term I want to introduce is rake angle. Huh? R-A-K-E, rake angle. Yeah, this is the angle that is made by the edge uh, of that um, file and the, 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 the how the, the, the direct, I mean, e angle amba inetengenezo na meno na e edge is known as the rake angle. And these files, uh, the single cut files, have a negative rake angle. It is uh, going into the, in the anti-clockwise direction. So that is what we refer to as a negative rake angle. We have double cut files. Uh, as you can see that the, these rows of uh, teeth are cut in both directions. Kunaile ambayo inakatwa sloping in this direction na kunaile ambayo inakatwa in this direction. A rasp cut file, the easiest way I can explain that is in a ile grate ya kitchen. Ile grate ambao fituki unapata katika kitchen inaka namna hiyo that is the easiest way i can explain but when we get back to physical learning and we have that opportunity then we will be able to to see it physically now according to the grade of cut as i said before kuna ile 
file ambayo ni rough if i want to remove those rough edges ama pieces of metal haraka haraka uh, when i don't care about the finishing i just want to do kazi haraka haraka then i will use a rough edge eh? and hiyo hiyo grade ama hiyo grit size inaendelea ki decrease mpaka ile wakati nataka the smoothest finishing then i will use a smooth file yeah? and as you see in this diagram that size ama meno Mm-hmm. Yeah. the spaces between those rows of teeth is in a rough is 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 huge as compared to a smooth file uh-huh. now shape of file uh-huh. categories are, i mean the, the the classification of 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 a file according to shape is usually dependent na ile kazi ambayo nataka kufanya for example if i want to file uh, around 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 edge ama around or a hollow hole nchimo ambayo ni cylindrical in nature i cannot use a flat file eh? ama triangular file ama a square square file what i will use is a round file mm-hmm. if i want to file a, a corner i cannot a, a, a rectangular ama triangular corner i cannot use a round file mm-hmm. kama nataka ku file shimo ambayo ni very small eh? i cannot use a, a hand file ama a flat file so depending on the on the work that you choose to do then you will choose the the shape eh? that is that is that is necessary for that job so according to that then we can find the sana sana this shape of file will uh, show you the different types of file that we have now i want to play a very small video so please let me know whether you can hear it and, uh, uh, and whether you can see it it will show us uh, some important things we need to know about filing so let me know especially kama unaweza sikia i mean kama unaweza iona
now what have we what have we seen in that video tumeona nini that video has just basically shown us the different types of tooth profiles ambazo tumeangalia hapo single double we have seen the techniques of filing depending on the type of work that you're doing then you can apply different techniques but the 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 thing that i want to talk about from that video is that those techniques are usually dependent na ile kazi ambayo unafanya but how do you actually file what is the most basic ama ile ambayo inatumika day to day now as you have seen in that video one of the things that the, that person has done ama the one of the things that you are required to do is to ensure that your workpiece is securely held by something we call a, a bench vise a vise is that tool that you use to kushikilia your work pieces in the workshop a bench vice v i c e so once you secure your your bench vice then if your dominant hand is right if you are right handed you will hold the handle using your right hand if you are left handed then you will use your left hand and shake the handle with your left hand let's say this is my file confirm this is my file over here if i am going to be to 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 if I'm, because i'm right handed then i'm going to hold my file with my right hand i have secured my uh, my work piece or my piece of metal on the bench vice okay? so it is secure aita songa songa nikifanya file now when i stand in front of my bench vice okay? if i am right handed then i'm going to stand then i will place myself on the left side of that vice okay? if i'm then if i'm left handed then i'm going to uh, stand on the right right side of the of the of the bench vice Now what happens if I am if I when I am filing eh, sana sana we we file ama we do the cut and stroke on the, as we move forward eh. if I am moving forward then I I I I I will I will I will apply pressure eh. you use your left hand if you are right handed use your left hand to 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 apply pressure unafinilia pale mbele if you are left handed then use your right hand to apply pressure so you una, una file eh. ukienda mbele una una apply pressure ukirudi nyuma don't apply pressure release your hand eh, ambayo ina apply pressure and return the return stroke you keep the file on the piece of metal on the return stroke on the forward stroke ama the cutting stroke apply pressure on the return stroke remove your hand eh, okay lakini usiondoe file eh, let it lie let it uh, rest on the on the on the piece of metal as you come back now you can use some tools ambazo inaitwa uh, engineer square uh, to ensure that the the edges let's say if you're fl- uh, you're filing a flat surface and you want to ensure that your surface is flat uh, you will use something known as an engineer square to unaekelea uh, unaekelea katika hiyo surface kuangalia kama it is uh, straight but that is a basic um, filing procedure as you have seen in that video you also have to take care of your file because it is a cutting edge i mean a cutting process as you continue cutting you will find that those pieces of metal will get stuck on your teeth on the rows of teeth so you have to make sure you remove them you can use a grinder ile a machine a machine grinder and you can use a wire brush and you always apply chalk so that when you continue filing then those pieces of metal do not stick what happens is that as you continue filing then the temperature will increase you know kitotoa is a chip in the metal then they forge that heat ambayo inakuwa produce might be high enough Yeah, to to forge ama to melt those pieces of metal and they stick on your file and if you don't clean your your file uh, often then you'll find that those pieces of chip is staying katika men and your file will become useless kwa sababu zita zita weld zita jewel katika file hiyo men ya file so you'll have to keep on buying files over and over again are we together to copa mons Are we together? Yes. If we are together please unmute and say that I am present. I might be talking to myself. <laughs> okay. Jafet you can hear me now. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. Yeah, we can hear you. All right. Now let us continue to the next uh, process. Eh? And this is threading. I'm sure we have all seen a screw before. Tumeona screw, tumezitumia. Uh, and the process of of uh, cutting those helical screws yeah? they usually helical in nature when i mean helical ni kitu ambayo inaka spring mm? 
So we 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 do that by cutting off eh on a work piece you slowly cut off the, a piece of metal in succession eh, so that you can get uh, those threads now this diagram and i don't know whether it is clear uh, is it eco clear uh, is it clear i don't know whether you can see it clearly i want us to see those those terms mnaiona yeah okay now there is some certain terms a uh, nomenclature that are necessary when you are dealing with threads ni vitu lazima mtu zijue kwa sababu there are usually calculations that are necessary when you are coming up with the threads now we have something known as um, major diameter we have something known as pitch diameter and we have something known as minor diameter now when we talk about threads we have this part ambayo ni the root ama the deepest part of your thread that is known as the, the root and we have this part the highest part of your thread which is known as the crest now when you talk about main, minor diameter it is the distance between the root and the root on the other side that is what we call minor diameter when we co- talk about major diameter then it is the distance between that crest and the crest on the other side okay now pitch diameter is the, the diameter in between the major diameter and the minor diameter uh, when we talk about uh, these things then it will uh, uh, because we're not required to do those calculations but if you are doing something uh, mechanical wise in gabidi sasa you do those calculations for example if you if you are making a project and you have to determine how much uh, how how much you want your screw to move confirm uh, if you are doing something to do with with power transmission and you are using threads to to move your your project then it will be necessary to understand this major diameter pitch diameter and all that helix angle uh, this is the angle made by your 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 thread i, I don't know whether you can see this eh? Ila, uh, let me admit someone it is that angle that is made by the thread Uh, this this e uh, angle upper upper and this this uh, axis yeah. when you draw a line uh, perpendicular yeah, to the horizontal axis and then you take that <coughs> angle that that thread makes that what you get is the helix angle pitch is a distance between two successive threads yeah. e crest and i crest yeah. the distance between them is uh, known as uh, pitch uh, depth of thread uh, of thread is the distance between the crest and the root so depending on how much you want the thread sana sana if you have deep threads eh, then your fa- your screw will be strong eh? if you have shallow threads then your screw will easily come out but if the the depth of that thread is too deep then then sana sana what happens is this thread usually break off eh? then if it is too shallow then aitashika itakuwa inatoka i'm sure, I'm sure uh, especially katika hizi vitanda za za kuweka screws If you have a uh, mali ambapo unaingiza thread uh, and you find that it is too shallow ama imekulika sana then you'll find that uh, either if it's too deep mm-hmm. ikishika itakuwa ngumu kutoa kwa sababu imesh, imeshika kabisa or if it is too shallow then your screw mm-hmm. ama nati yako haitakuwa i mean your bolt haitakuwa ina ina inashika itakuwa inatoka too very easily now lead mm-hmm. when i when i turn my screw mm-hmm. ama my 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 bolt and it moves bit the distance from this for for example iko hapa at this point it is here when i turn it and then this point comes to this point then that distance moved by the thread i mean by the screw is known as lead that is known as lead and we are told that a single thread lead is given by 1 times the pitch if i if i have only one thread a single thread then if my screw is a single thread screw then the distance that that screw will move when i turn it uh, once then it is one times the pitch if i have a double thread then if that distance moved when i turn that screw in one one full revolution is twice two times the pitch and namna hiyo if i have a three thread screw then the distance moved when i turn that screw uh, clockwise one revolution am anti clockwise is uh, three times the pitch and now the thread angle is the distance ama the angle made by these two by these two uh, easy, 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 these two threads eh? the distance 
I mean the angle uh, uh, formed when they meet at the root is what we call uh, the the thread angle. Now, depending on the type of thread that you are, you're making, yeah, you'll find that these angles are, to, are totally different. Kulingana na kazi ya hiyo thread, these angles will be different. Now, I will show you a video yeah, so that we can see how these threads are usually made. Yeah. We can make them by hand or we can make them by machine. Now, what I'm going to show you is by machine, lathe machine. I'm sure by now, since I've mentioned lathe machine so many times, we have seen it uh, and we have an idea of how it looks like. So I will show you how it is done using a lathe machine. If you have any questions, please let me know. Now this is a machining process. If you ever hear a machine shop, this is what is usually done. Mm? This is known as facing. When you use a, a cutting tool to cut across the face of a, of a workpiece, you may find a facing. Mm? It's done to reduce the length of that workpiece. Because you're cutting across the face. Kwa una kata, una kata, una kata, una kata. These are external threads. They are made on the outside of your workpiece. Now, this is a very important thing that you'll find in the machine, the lathe machine, or even in the books. When you're doing your calculations, you yeah, can your calculations and you know how much you want your threads, the pitch, the distance between those crests, how much you want your threads to be. You have to then select the gear, the gear katika ile machine ambao unatumia. I can't just go to a machine shop put my workpiece in a lathe, then start cutting. No. I have to select those gears with, with, with respect to the, the pitch, the, the, the distance between those threads. I need to know the speed at which that machine has to rotate for safety purposes. Now, that is making external threads. The same happens when you're making internal threads. I have to go to those books. I have to go and then uh, look at the thread distance, uh, my, the pitch distance between my threads, then I can be able to, to choose the, uh, the gear. I can select the gear that is necessary for the speed. Mm -hmm. Sawa, Usually it's not a straightforward process. Unenda kwa machine, kisha unafungua machine. Now, that is using a lathe machine. We can also use um, manual, ma we can do it by hand. Now, this is this thing ambayo naeka is known as a G clamp. Kwa sababu inakale ata G. Kazi yake ni kushikilia your workpiece more tightly. Kwa mfano, in this case, he doesn't have a bench vice. This, this, is, this is what we call a vice. It is what we use to secure our workpieces. Since his, his vice is not secured to the table, this is usually known as a pipe vice. Hii natumika na watu wa plumbing. So he has to secure that vice using G clamps. Now, this is known as a ratchet. Eh? Huh? This is what he is using to cut the threads in that pipe. Hmm? He will turn his 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 um, his his wrench. Eh? We have the 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 we have the tool ambayo inatumika ku cut the threads inside this wrench. Now, what does how does a wrench work? Hmm? You will turn clockwise, and the tool will cut the the. Will, will cut the, the, the threads, okay? It will cut the threads. So in a turn clockwise, it cuts, it locks with the ratchet. When you turn it clockwise, it, uh, it dis, it's in a, in a dislocate, ama in a, in a, dis, in a, in a chana na iyo ratchet. So, unaeza rudisha nyuma. Okisongesha mbele tena, ina engage na iyo cutting tool, kwa hivyo ina kata. Okurudisha nyuma, ina disengage. So, so, you, so the process, the reason why you have a, you use a ratchet is so that you don't have to remove that cutting tool, lama that tool, kila time unataka kukata. Ukikata one, one round, siyati uh, unaitoa, kisha unarudisha una tena unendelea kukata. That is how a ratchet usually works. Now, as you're cutting, you have to turn that uh, tool anti-clockwise. Remember you're cutting chippings from the piece of metal. So these chippings are usually present in that tool. So the reason why you have to go back anti-clockwise, if you're cutting clockwise, then you have to return 
to go anti clockwise uh, so that you are you are cleaning you are flushing those chippings uh, we do not want those chippings inside as you are cutting kwa sababu zita zitaharibu your threads hmm? are you together uh, is there a question up to that point question If you are with me then I'll meet and say that I am present menya mother son Is there any question up to that point Okay Now depending on the type of work that you are making the threads to do we have different type of threads Now the threads that we are used to see in easy ambazo tunatumia for fastening purposes kukazia mm? and we have the v threads they usually v in shape the most common one the metric mm? if you look at a screw around it okay pitch diameter ni kama e pitch e pitch distance some and distance between two successive threads ah ni kama hiyo hiyo pitch pitch diameter Sijui kama uliweza kuona let's see pitch 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 um, pitch distance ni distance between two these two uh, successive threads crest yake hapo juu na hapo juu but pitch diameter ni ile ukiangalia uki if i was to draw a line ikate hii yeah i cut a thread namna hii na draw a line i cut a thread namna hii you'll find that the pitch diameter is usually the diameter in between the major diameter which is from this crest to the other crest and the minor diameter which is from this root to this root ile diameter katikati utapata inaitwa pitch diameter but pitch yenyewe pitch is that distance between one uh, crest of the of the thread to the other crest of the other thread mali ambapo Uh, threads are successive mali ambapo zinafuatana i can't say this is pitch from here to here no kwa sababu these two threads are not successive as if watani but the distance between this here and here uh, between two threads that are in succession they, are, they follow each other then that is known as pitch sawa sawa sasa hiyo in between yani iko iko wapi and hebu wewe utuoneshe sijui kama unaona hii picha vizuri now what i can do for now what i can do for now kwa sababu you're not doing calculations is i can look for a better picture and i i show you this was just to show you the the, the these names so that you can go mnaweza uh, zichora ama muandike mahali so that uh, in your free time you can go look at what minor diameter means pitch diameter lakini kama tungekuwa tunafanya calculations then we can we, we could have tungefanya calculation so that we can see at what point in this case mfano umepatiwa pitch umepatiwa angle helix angle ukapatiwa thread angle na lead then it will be very possible to calculate hizi zingine pitch diameter and, and all that but since you're not required then it is not necessary but what I'll do is I'll look for a better picture so that you can uione vizuri ah sawa sawa is there any other question Okay now I was saying the the, the threads ni tofauti na kulingana na ile kazi ambayo unafanya then we have different types and the first type is ile ya fast and ya kukazia these are the most common ones and they usually v in shape kama ile kama hii picha ambayo ni tumetoka kuona utapata kwamba this this these threads are v ni letter v so for those those ambazo easy amb- is this that we used to see na usually used for fastening kukazia uh, vitu uh, and the most common ones are the metric and the witworth metric are what we see every day and we have witworth uh, threads those that are used for power transmission kat- kama katika gear kuna gear ambayo tunaita rack and pinion utapata kwamba these threads are not v in shape but they, we still have threads that we use for power transmission and we have knuckle threads we have acme threads and we have saw tooth threads uh, this is a is a diagram 
Uh, these are the normal V, the metric threads. Utakwamba, and these are the Whitworth. Both of them are V, but here uh, metric, V yake ni sharp. Uh, na hii nyingine ni kama milima na mabonde. Mm. As you can see, the thread angle ni tofauti pia. Hii ni 55 ya Whitworth, na hii sana sana ni 60. Mm. Look at the buttress, uh, square, uh, acme, uh, warm. This we use them sana sana for power transmission. Uh, if I want to move, uh, kwa mfano, hii rack and pinion utapata kwamba ni gear ambayo inakaa namna hii acme square uh, ohm ni chuma ambayo imetengenezwa a flat a flat piece of metal ambayo iko na meno kama hii and then i put a gear ambayo ina mesh na hizi meno so i can be able to move this piece of 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 metal and it will move my 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 machine or whatever that i'm moving so you'll find that this square ohm acme uh, threads are used for power transmissions now, what we have seen so far is thread making externally using a machine. We have also seen uh, internal threading using a machine, a lathe machine. But we can use uh, our hands to uh, internal threading. Because if, for example, I want to make a thread, uh, a simple threads, in a piece of, of metal, I don't have to take my, my piece of metal katika lathe machine, kisha nikafanya your kazi. No, I can do it by hand. So I will show you a small video of how this is done. Uh, sana sana if you're dealing with uh, threads and bars of diameter in Indogo. So tell me if you can be able to see the video clearly. Hiyo tool ambayo ameonesha hapo tri square it's a tool that we'll get to see in the workshop if we have that chance and you make sure that your surface is flat we use that to to ensure that our surface is flat
Now, have we been able to see what has happened? Tumeza kuona. Anyone, have you been able to see what was going on? The first thing that happened is ali drill. Ali tumia a drill, a drill in machine ku drill. This is to ensure that you have a path ya kuingiza your okay when we do in uh, internal threading which is known as tapping by hand we use certain tools these are known as taps zile zile tools ambazo unatumia kukata ya threads are known as taps the tool ambayo unatumia to kushikilia tap is known as a, a die holder a die holder is what you put your tap into this die holder is usually found within uh, uh, a, a range yeah. the thread a, a, a range yeah. mm-hmm. are we together we have the die hole, uh, the, the 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 thread in die mali ambapo unaeka die i mean your tap and then you have that die holder ama the range now when you when you when you di- when you're doing uh, tapping yeah. internal threading hata kwa ile lathe machine ambayo tuliona the first thing is you have to do is you have to drill you have to provide a hole ama a hollow part for you to insert your tap Now as you have seen in that process kuna this these are known as serial taps hmm? we have the entry tap we have the plug tap and you have that final tap now this entry tap hmm? after okay we have the serial taps and we have this nut tap now let us look at the, this diagram this diagram essentially what in a, uh, let me let me let me enlarge it kidogo Now the first thing that happened is the drilling. Hii ni kupatia tu a passageway for your taps to enter. After you drill a hole in your workpiece ama in your metal, then you have to use a counter sinking bore. Uh, this tool it is very essential hmm, when you are drilling. Why? This will enlarge hata ukiangalia shape yake eh, ni tapered. Eh, tapered ni kumaanisha kwamba ina ina form angle hapo mbele. It is tapered to give you to enlarge eh, in enlarge your shimo okay, so that when you insert that tap uh, this uh, entering tap okay, inaingia smoothly okay, even when you're drilling kwa mfano unataka ku drill shimo ya let's say 50 mm in diameter you don't go and take uh, a drill a drill e bit huenda uh, ukachukua e drilling bit ya 50 mm kisha ukaeka kwa drilling machine alafu unaanza ku drill no you in, you answer when you drill incrementally unaanza na labda ya 10 20 25 30 40 50 kisha unafika ya 50 the reason you do that is to to ensure that first of all your drill is ifunjike your bit doesn't break ama your drill machine doesn't break kwa sababu if you drill ukichukua tu ya 50 ukaingiza katika drill machine and then you start drilling then the 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 forces that will be experienced zitakuwa high the heat produced will be too high so you have to do it incrementally so that you do not ruin your your drilling bits now we use this tool eh uh, kufanya hiyo shimo hapo mbele iwe uh, wide kidogo kisha unaingiza hiyo first uh, tap these three are known as serial taps una ingiza the tap the first one is for for cutting entering the second one inaitwa plug tap and then you have the finishing tap hizi sasa ndio tunatumia to cut our threads as you can see there the first tap the entering tap the cutting edge mali ambapo unatumia kukata your threads ni longer is much longer than these two kwa sababu this one is used for the rough cutting hii ndio inatumika ile hii ndio inakata sana hizo threads then as we continue using the plug tap and the finishing tap then these tabs are used for kumalizia to ensure that our threads are not sharp they are smooth so that when you when you ukiingiza bolt yako then it moves smoothly Now we use the final one to the, the if we sana sana we don't use this this one but if you have an, this tap then it is it is important to use it to ensure that the 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 threads that you have made are smooth and we do not want our threads to to be to be to be rough una kama i don't know whether we've we've tumekuwa na hii experience before kama for example unakaza kitanda unakaza kitanda alafu inafika mali bolt yako inakwama inakataa kusonga you'll find that the threads 
labda uli thread by ya threads interlocked so ukiweka okay, nati yako unapata mahali inafika mahali na kataa kusonga kabisa so you use this final tool this tab to ensure that your your threads are free of uh, the chippings ambazo unakata huko ndani labda kuna zenye zimekwa ndani uh, to ensure that your threads are maybe deep enough uh, or maybe not too deep or too shallow so we use this to ensure that now we have this nut tap this nut tap is very unique why kwa sababu it is a combination of these three these three serial taps if let's say i want to make threads haraka haraka and i don't have that time ya kufanya this kuingiza hii ya kwanza ya pili ya tatu then i can use this nut tap to find uh, the, that your kazi ya uh, those three taps but uh, this the reason why we don't use this if you want uh, kazi nzuri is this is usually done uh, like inafanya hiyo kazi haraka haraka yeah? so when you just you will just insert one tap and it is used sana sana for those rough it inakata roughly mm-hmm. kama nataka kutengeneza threads haraka haraka and i don't have me, uh, the time to use those three tabs individually then i will use an art tab uh, it combines those cutting uh, edges for the for the for the those are the three tabs as you can see hata meno yake hapa mbele ambapo unaingiza na una, unaanza kukata sio as deep or as sharp as huku nje yeah. unaingiza mwanzo ina 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 ina, ina kata kidogo as, as it prepares uh, the, the that metal for this other this easy zingine this other teeth kwa sababu ikifika sasa hapa yeah. kutoka hapa mpaka hapa sasa it will be cut in large chunks of the metal mm-hmm. So this is usually used when you want to cut that thread once. Yeah. One time unaingiza tu unakata thread mara moja kisha unamalizia. Now these tools yeah, are necessary. If you're going to be making threads ambazo ni, ni ndogo, we will use that. It's not necessary to take your piece of metal to the lathe machine. Now how do we name threads? How do we usually name threads? I have chosen metric threads as an example. Mm-hmm. You will find that this the first letter will usually denote the type of thread. Yeah? In this case metric or metric. Yeah? The second number uh, will use will be used to um, to denote the diameter, the nominal diameter, 8 mm. Are we together same way ukienda kwa hardware. Utaenda useme unataka misumari ya inch 25, inch 10, inch 5 the diameter that nominal diameter that is used to identify the, the thread i mean the screw if when you see such a designation we have m10 and 1.25 the m will still stand for the type of thread the 10 will still stand for the nominal diameter but this will stand for the pitch the distance between two successive threads is the pitch Now this is how we usually name ama denote uh, threads mm-hmm. so that when you see this in a chart somewhere mm-hmm. when you are when you are trying to make your threads and unaenda kwa workshop alafu unaambiwa uh, umepatiwa kazi na your supervisor ama whoever is in charge and you are told to make threads you will find charts that have these numbers mm-hmm. so when you see these numbers on a chart somewhere then you will have an idea that this indicates the type of thread this indicates the diameter and this indicates the pitch di- the, 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 the pitch distance between those threads mm-hmm. is there a question any question so far now up to there we've been able to see the the types of uh, processes that we, we we that are normally done in a, in a, in a, in the workshop Now I had told you to write notes on electrical materials so I'm not sure whether you are able to write them but I will just discuss them if there's something that uh, I don't talk about and okay kwa notes well and good if there's something that I have here that you don't have in your notes then it is important that you note them down as we as we move along Now electrical materials are those that are those materials that we use in our day to day installations electrical installations we have conductors we have insulators we have semiconductors no something that i am sure that you haven't interacted with sana uh, sana you might not have heard of are magnetic materials and i want you to do a research on magnetic materials you have go find out go read and find out how magnetic materials are used 
in electrical installations some are how we use them for electrical jobs the same we have a conductor we have an insulator we have some conductors we have a, class, a classification uh, known as magnetic materials now what are conductors these are the materials that freely allow the conduction we can carry current easily from one place to another uh, this is usually because of a potential difference when you have a change in voltage in a conductor this allows current to flow from one point to the other conductors can be metals can be non metals can be electrolytes can be alloys okay there are so many types of conductors confano jonathan which which metal is a conductor of electricity which magani ambao tunaweza tumia ku conduct steam Uh, Jacqueline, which uh, non-metal, uh, which non-metal can we use to conduct electricity? Or anyone else? Still as many attach. I want us to be at least active because we're not going to be able to get out of here. We're going to be able to get out of here. Diana Godwin, which type of non-metal can conduct electricity? kwa pamoja kweli Am I audible can you hear me Yeah we can hear you yes, aluminium can. aluminium ni chuma bana Oh na metal eh yeah, na metal Mmeandika hapo tu kwa slide unaweza angalia ukaanguka ukasoma Graphite penseli ukienda ukachukua penseli ukaweka katika live part ya steam utapigwa shock graphite allows allows uh, con- can conduct electricity that's why we are told not to put pencils in sockets lakini watu bado wanaenda wanaiweka kwa socket kuweka charge utapigwa shock so if you're not careful it, can, it does conduct electricity now conductors are usually uh, usually conduct electricity because they have low resistance eh? but siku manisha kwamba all conductors conduct electricity no there are some that have high resistivity eh? they have low conductivity eh? so they are still conductors yes but we don't use them for conduction of electricity we use them for heating purposes kwa mfano ile heater ambayo unanunua unaweka kwa nyumba kwa sababu kuna baridi that is still a conductor it will allow current to pass through but because it high, it has a high resistance then what is produced is 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 heat ile bulb ambayo unatumia ile ile bulb ambayo iko na tungsten filament that filament that tungsten filament is still a conductor of electricity but it has a very high resistance so we use that for for light it produces uh, uh, light by the heat the the, the heat ile heat na ina inafanya hiyo filament ichome ichomeke na produce a very bright light it still a conductor yes, but it is it is used for for lighting purposes or heating pal- it can be used for making heating elements kama heat electric heaters so a conductor can, might have a high uh, conductivity and a low conductivity based on the resistance now what are some of the properties of conductors yeah I have talked about resistance. There are some conductors that have high uh, conducti- high high conductivity and there are some uh, conductors that have low conductivity. So depending on that then we can use conductors to transport uh, electrical current and those that have low conductivity and high resistance we use them to make those heating elements. Kwa mfano heater kuna zile ambazo tunatumia kutengeneza bulb those uh, filament lamps uh, inductance have we, i am sure by now we have come across that term somewhere your inductance umepatana nao mahali have you been, have you come across that term somewhere now what is inductance in your own words I'm sure you've come across it somewhere in your, in your studies in other in other units. What is inductance? Mm. 
inductance ni nini now what happens when you pass an electric current through a conductor hmm? an electric no, a magnetic field is formed around that conductor now that magnetic field especially when you supply ac current we know what ac current is isn't it? we do know what ac current is tunajua tofauti ya dc na ac hello <laughs> we do we, we, we know what ac and dc is Uh, Jonathan, AC is what? AC is alternating current. It is, yeah, it is in both way. DC is one way. DC is in, in, in a directional line. It travels in one direction and alternating. It changes. Kuna wakati itakuwa positive na kuna wakati inakuwa negative. Sindio? Now, that alternating current when you pass it through a conductor you will find that a magnetic field is formed around at a dc every time you pass current inside the conductor a magnetic field is formed around that conductor in dc that magnetic field is constant it doesn't change because sababu that dc itself is constant in nature haitegemee like frequency lakini in ac ni utapata kwamba there are parts of that current that will be positive and there are parts of that current that will be negative So because of that change in, in that current then the magnetic field around that uh, around that conductor also changes. Now because of that change in that magnetic field then we have something we have um, we have EMF yeah, voltage induced in that current I mean in that conductor. Mm-hmm. Now that magnetic field produced in that in that conductor can be external there's that produced on the outside of that conductor na kuna ile ambayo inakuwa induced ama produced inside the conductor so the magnetic field ambayo inakuwa inside the conductor is ni kidogo sana it is negligible as compared to that um, to that on the outside yeah? so be- because of these two fields yeah? kuna kitu inaitwa flux linkage that magnetic field ama those lines of magnetic force zina yeah? interact yeah? and because of the interaction between these two fields yeah? we have emf yeah? induced When that EMF is induced then it tends to oppose the current causing it it tends to oppose that current ambayo inasababisha that induced EMF and this is what we call inductance you will come across this term so many times in your learning hata ukiwa kwa field you will have to get used to it kwa mfano when you talk about transformers how do transformers work we have two coils one is supplied with a steamer it forms a magnetic field that magnetic field induces voltage that voltage now induces uh, another voltage in the second coil so we are able to step up that voltage and step it down so uh, this term will will come across it so many times now that inductance yeah, will cause something known as a voltage drop voltage drop is let's say i'm supplying for 50 volts utapata kwamba some of that voltage will be lost because of maybe internal resistance or we have other components connected in my circuit now if you are distributing electricity for long distances kwa mfano sisi tunaishi Mombasa na labda stima yetu ambayo tunapata tunaipata from those seven fork dams which are kilometers away hundreds of kilometers away from us so you'll find that if i don't take into consideration that value of inductance then the current ama the voltage that is coming to us then will drop and it should not drop significantly kwa sababu we distribute our power through AC then we have to take that value of inductance when you have too much inductance in our electric conductors then that that uh, voltage will then drop significantly hmm? are we together there's usually an allowable voltage drop that is specified by the the regulation bodies ambazo zina zina regulate mambo ya stima there is that allowable um, voltage sana sana inakuanga up to 5% of the of the distrib- of that voltage if it goes beyond 5% then kumaanisha then that the the voltage that we are getting might cause problems now this is usually uh, in a depend for any mambo e uh, mambo inductance ni for ac only dc uh, 
you won't have to worry about the inductance because of that magnetic field is constant. I'm sorry in Mingia into technical terms, but I just wanted to explain. Now, electric field inside the conductor is zero. What do I mean? When you have a perfect conductor, uh, if if there is electric, uh, if there is a field inside the the, the the conductor, this field will exact uh, a force on the electrons. Remember that these electrons are ions. Right? They have they are, they, they are charged. They are ions. So if you have a field inside a conductor, then this force will will then a force will be exerted on the electrons, which means that the electrons will not be able to move freely within the conductor. Remember that, uh, that the reason why we have uh, the, we have current flow in our conductors is because we have free electrons. If we had an electric field in that conductor, then that means that those electrons are not able to move. Uh, so that's why you say that in, in, in an, an electric field in a conductor is zero. In equilibrium, it is zero. So that's why you have free flowing electrons. Now the charge density is zero. What do I mean? We don't have an electric field in, uh, in the conductor. So uh, as I have said before, remember that electrons are negatively charged ions. So be, when you have um, ions that are of the same polar, they are of the same pole. Yeah? When you have a negative pole and a negative pole brought together, remember uh, magnetism will find that they repel each other. Yeah? The same case when you have electrons together, yeah? the electrostatic repulsion between those electrons will make those electrons to be far away from each other as possible. So what happens when these electrons repulse each other? We find that uh, the electrons tend to move to the edges, not to the surface of that conductor. So katikati tapata kwamba the charge, the charge density, ama the charge within the the center, ama inside the conductor is zero. Because the electrons have been, this is may repel each other to the surface. Free charge only exists on the surface. The electrons have repelled to the surface. So you'll find that. Uh, the charge mm, steam it upon the surface in that inside the conductors and the sun we don't have current it, it's on the surface so that's why you say that free charge is on the surface of the conductor are we together <laughs> to copper mode <laughs> on top of the of the of the on top of the of the of those that you had written down. Yeah? Huh? I'm sure you wrote some down. They might not be this, but I'm sure you have some that you, you, you have written down. So you can add. Atazili Ambazo and Dipa set is Korong. Add them, compile them. You can even add others. Now, some of the, of the, of the types of conductors we had named in Kama Copper, Aluminium. Silver is the best conductor we have there, out there. But silver is so expensive, so you can't put it everywhere. When I imagine you can silver katika power lines, what what does it know I use it? So you don't use silver sana sana because it's very expensive. Uh, gold, platinum, water. Water is also a very conduct good conductor of heat because probably it has ions that are free to move. You yourself uh, are a good conductor of electricity. Now, we have insulators. Insulators are materials that don't allow conduction of heat yeah, and electricity. Yeah. And some of uh, and the examples of insulators that we use around are plastics, wood, glass, rubber. Even air is a, is a, is a good insulator of, 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 of uh, electricity. Now what are some of the properties of insulators? They have a very high resistance. That is, how, that is why uh, they do not allow the conduction of heat, and in this case, electricity. They should have large dielectric strength. What does this mean? Now, there's that minimum voltage that uh, resistors must have. That, uh, ile, no, the maximum voltage that, uh, ma the maximum voltage that a resistor, than, that an insulator can handle before it, 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 it fails, mm -hmm. before it collapses. Now, that is what we uh, refer to uh, dielectric strength. Kuna ile resistance, ama kama kwa mfano, my earphone or my charger. Kuna ile voltage that it can handle before it omeke. That is what we know as the electric strength. I'm sure you've come across charges and buzzers in Ongo. Here you can that you overloaded your insulator, or you overloaded your conductor, or whatever that you had connected in 
to an electric source such that if you come early that your insulator could not handle it so it, it failed so insulators must have for them to be insulators then they must have a high and electric strength otherwise they will fail they should also have mechanical strength to be able to handle the weight of your conductors inside those inside the the the, 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 the insulation we might not see this in our day-to-day -day insulators come here here for now a charger but when you talk about large installations you have to consider about the tension how tight is that is that cable I'm a that uh, conductor when you're doing installation and you find that the cable is what is heavy a yeah, thousand kilograms yeah. so you have to make sure that your your insulation is strong enough to handle that weight the insulation should not be uh, susceptible and right? that should not be to, should not break down easily when exposed to the elements okay it should be able to withstand that temperature you should not melt easily at you keka kitu insulation katika ukeka nje kama ukiacha earphones lale nje utapata insulation imeungua no they should not be able to react to the elements they should also be free from unwanted impurities the minute you have impurities in the insulation then you are introducing the you you, you for confirm if i had metallic impurities in my insulation then i'm making my insulator to be a conductive to be uh, to be conductive it can be able to conduct uh, electricity mm -hmm. so i should make sure that it's free from uh, impurities and we'll see this sana sana when we talk about semiconductors mm -hmm. now we had mentioned types of, of, of insulation so kutegemea na the type of work that that cable or that conductor is doing then we choose different types of insulators mm -hmm. are we together up to that point tuko pamoja if you are together please unmute and say i'm present are we, are we pre okay okay all right now semiconductors semiconductors are materials that whose whose properties lie in between that of a conductor and that of, of, a, of an insulator but could take me another work that I'm using that semiconductor for I'm, I'm using it for then I can I can I can make it to be to lie more on the side of a conductor or I can make it to lie more on the side of of, uh, of an insulator now the semiconductors are usually grouped into two major categories called intrinsic and extrinsic intrinsic are usually the the pure form chemically we yeah? can katika nature those pure pure forms of semiconductors are known as intrinsic semiconductors and uh, the most uh, common example is silicon and another known as germanium those are the pure uh, semiconductors yeah? extrinsic semiconductors usually have uh, impurities added to them mm -hmm. so i can add impurities to make it more of a conductor or i can add impurities to make it more of a insulator now depending on the type of imp impurity that I, I put in that uh, con semiconductor then it gives me a p type semiconductor or an n type semiconductor you will come across these terms yeah. as you move forward there is a p type and an n, an n, an n type kwanza kuna kitu niko show mtapatana nayo inaitwa pn junction a pn junction is a semiconductor as a is a semi uh, is, is, is basically a semiconductor when you talk about diodes those are semiconductors transistors those are semiconductors and they work on the principle of pn junctions so depending on the type of, 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 of uh, impurity you put to uh, the type of impurity you, you add to a pure to a pure uh, semiconductor then you get a p type extrinsic semiconductor or a n type uh, extrinsic uh, semiconductor mm -hmm. now what are some of the properties of semiconductors we have said that their properties lie in between that of a semiconductor i mean that of a conductor and an insulator if the, depending on the type of when i talk about intrinsic or pure pure semiconductors their conductivity or their resistivity is usually is purely based on temperature if i increase the temperature of a pure semiconductor then the conduction increases it increases the conduction of electricity 
when I reduce mm, the, the, the temperature of a semiconductor, then the, the, the resistance increases. Mm. It becomes more of, a, of an insulator. Mm. When I talk about uh, impure, the extrinsic uh, semiconductors, then depending on the type of impurity you add, then you can make it more of a conductor or you can make it less of a conductor, more of an insulator. So their, co their property of conduction and resistance usually lie in between a conductor and a semiconductor. They also have a negative coefficient of resistance. That is what I've explained just before. When I reduce the temperature, the resistance increases. When I increase the temperature, the resistance reduces. And there is usually a calculation to determine that coefficient of uh, negative coefficient, temperature coefficient of resistance. Uh, the, yeah, basically, and there's so many, yeah, but I won't go much into the details of other, of, of other properties because I assume you have written those notes. And those are the most important ones that I had to mention today. Now, cables. And before I even mention, am I going to detail about cables? What I want you to tell me, what is the difference between a cable and a wire? Tofauti a cable and a wire and Or if someone asks asks you when in the interview, because the mutual calculator, to follow the cable now I am in. What answer will you give them? We are all electrical engineers here, so we should have an idea of what a cable is and what a wire is. And I want you to tell me, anyone, what is the difference between a cable and a wire? Diana, Jonathan, anyone? Good one. Uh, I think a cable, uh -huh. a, a cable is the, a conductor which is which is insulated. Mm -hmm. Now why? Mm -hmm. Why it can maybe? Okay, a cable, it can be a one strand, two strand, but those are zero, uh, like even a wire. Okay. Then, uh, it can either be an insulated or insulated. I think it's okay. I thought it was good. What do you think? What do you, what do you think? A wire uh -huh. is a single conductor, okay. whereas a cable is a group of conductors. That is correct. So, Jonathan, why any more than strand moja? Both of them might be insulated dama or, in, or uninsulated. Now, that depends on the type of uh, or, or the type of job that conduct that cable or wire is doing. But why any moja? When you group wires, dama strands together, then what you get is a cable. A cable. So, so. Now, cables are of different types, and I gave you that assignment. So that you can see tofauti, yeah? which are which are some which are some so the, which are the different types of cables and their applications. Yeah? Now, uh, what you're going to talk about here, power cables, zile ambazo tunatumia for uh, electrical transmission uh, and, and and distribution. Uh, now, I had asked you to write notes. And when I talked about the, trans the construction of cables, I got very interesting uh, notes. Now, when I talk about construction, what I mean is, what are they made of? The actual process of making cables. No, no, no. What I mean is, what are they made of? Now, the main components of a cable is the, the insulation, the conductor, the conductive part, and the mechanical protection, which is known as a sheath. Mm -hmm. the, there is that thing that surrounds the cable. Right? This is what you usually see sana sana when you look at cables and our electric distributors, KPLC, and other generation of plants. What we see is the sheath, the insulation in a Kongan dad. So the sheath is that mechanical protection. Right? Then we have the insulation and we have the conductor. So the conductor and you to for the, the conducting part to transmit the power and the electricity from one point to the other. The insulation is what we protect us from the, the, the life part of the conductor. It isolates that conductor with other objects, the external surface. We have the sheath. 
the shield is now what protects the conduct the, the cable the insulation and the conductor from now the elements the mechanical forces that we subject it to kikanyanga cable what we step in on sana sana is not the, the insulator is the sheath are we together now depending on the type of cable then you'll see that this um this uh, these parts are different and then that's why i gave you that assignment so that you can see the differences uh, you'll find that kuna cable ambayo conductor yake ni moja so that is a single cable we have those that have two three kama hii ambayo hii picha ambayo nimeonyesha hapa this is a three phase cable we have the three phases indicated by the color of these insulators we have the yellow the red and the blue phase so this is a three phase cable so this is not a single core cable anymore why because we have three conductors so this is a three core uh, cable so now depending on the type of cable then you see that there is a difference dif different type of construction kuna ile ambayo itakuwa na three cable three cores kuna ile ambayo conductor ni moja so that is a single core single core cable you find that the insulations also used are different kuna ile ambayo itatumia mineral kama iron oxide as the insulation there is that that we use plastic as an insulation there is that that we use paper uh, polythenes the insulation uh, the 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 armor uh, armor is a very important also part of a cable uh, you may not see it in uh, this uh, cable ambazo tuko nazo katika nyumba but when you talk about uh, this cable that we use for power transmission armor is very important so you'll find that on top of your of your of your internal sheet ama yeah. um, insulation sana sana you find a sheet of steel ama um, aluminium that is imefungwa yeah. there is a sheet of steel that is woven around the the, the insulation ama um, the sheet or it might be braided kama nyola wa chana imekuwa braided around that cable that is an armor that is just a basic uh, uh, mechanical it adds that mechanical strength to the to the cable Now you might add another insulation on top of that armor or you might add another sheath on top of that armor. What we do is the reason of those adding those sheath is to protect the inside of the of the cable. We do not want the elements moisture, sunlight, dust to enter inside that cable. So we add a layer of protection above all those and that is the purpose of the sheath. Now depending on the type of cable depending on the uses of that cable and this construction of that cable may differ. Kuna ile cable ambayo inatumika for transmission of data. Kuna ile ambayo kwa mfano ile that the one that we use for the fiber optics cable. The construction will still be similar but utapata kwa mfano in a fiber optic cable you don't have conductors because you're not transmitting electricity. What you're doing is transmitting data from one point to another. So I assignment I know it's due I don't know when it is due love that is today or tomorrow I don't know whether you've done it as well kuna I've gotten some some but not all of them so do it see the different types of cables and they use it even power cables ambazo tunaongelea are different so you see when you do that assignment then you'll be able to see the different types we had talked about conductors we use them for for conduction of the electricity now As I said before silver is the best conductor we have but we don't find silver used for conduction first of all it is very expensive you can you can imagine uh, you're told that a kilogram of silver is let's say 3600 for 3600 shillings and a kilogram of copper lab than 20 bob both of them will still conduct uh, electricity but silver even though it's the best uh, conductor out there it's still it's expensive so we use copper and aluminum sana sana for the conduction the conductors now how do we label our conductors when you go and see a wire you'll find that in and equal this the, the denotation ama the designation of cables ama conductors you may, you have a seven stroke and a letter so the first number that 719 eh, 37 on a cable will indicate the number of strands eh, the number of strands within that cable eh? so lazima iwe ni ni power no ile cable kwa mfano inabayo inatumiwa kwa winch ile winch ambayo inatumika kwa mfano kwa ferry ile cable ambayo inapandisha ama inashusha ile mlango wa ferry that cable you find that iko na ile label 1937 whichever that, that shows the number of strands ambazo zimetumika kutengeneza hiyo cable the second letter will be used to determine ama it's used to denote the size the diameter of that individual strand in that cable 
Mm-hmm. So is it 10 millimeters, 5 millimeters, 3 millimeters, 3 centimeters, 5 centimeters, 10 centimeters? So that second letter denotes the diameter of that uh, individual strand of wire within that cable. Mm-hmm. Insulation. Mm-hmm. The insulations are different. The insulation of the, that is found on ships, for example, is different than the insulation that is found in our houses. Mm-hmm. The ocean environment is very harsh as compared to your house. The types of insulation that nozzles in the Tumika Confano Kwameli are different. Kwameli Confano, we use a halogen free type of insulation so that when they burn, in case there is a fire, they do not produce toxic fumes. Wakijaribu kuchama ile insulation in the Pata Confano Katika Nyumbaku, it will produce um, fumes, toxic ones. Why? Because your, your house is less subject to fire as compared to that environment in the sea. Your house is not a very harsh environment. We have a part insulation away to make it nice and in the plastic and the PVC, polythene as well. The inner sheet protects the insulation from moisture. They will cover it around the 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 the, the, the insulation. The protective covering. This sheet can be a mineral. Can be a paper, an impregnated paper. PVC as well can be used. Impregnated paper is a, a paper that is in a core uh, covered with a solution, come in front of resin. So we use that on top of the, of the cable. We have amarin. Amarin, I'd say, is used a sheet of steel. Amari can use braided steel on top of your, of your sheet or on top of your insulation. This just gives the, the mechanical cable, the, that cable mechanical strength. We also have amarin. There is a type of cable where we only have one conductor inside that cable and an insulator. Then on top of that cable, we have the armor. That armor is now used as the return wire, armor the, the earthing or the ground. So it just depends on the type of application. There is in the, some cables we use the, the cable as the ground. In some cable, we use it, we use it for, in case there is a fault, a short circuit, a fault current in a tumika sana, uh, that full current will flow on top of the earthing. So it is very important to ground that earth so that when you, well, when you okishi or sepigo shock, so it, because it might be a conductor of electricity, it might be the return, uh, the, the, the neutral. So make sure you have, the earthing is very important in the earthing. Um, Overshift, this is now what you see on top of your cable. It might be there, it may not be there. It just depends on the application of your cable. Now, what are some of the factors we consider when choosing cable installation? Cable installation is a very important factor. You, as an engineer, should be able to know the tension that you're going to conduct to 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 ile tension about akaza your cable. So you have to ensure that your cable is not too tightly uh, too tight, or it might not it, it, it might it's not too too loose. Hmm? Even the crew ambayo unafanya kazi nayo eh, must be knowledgeable on these issues. Usipata kwamba mtu hajai patana na cable mahali so he doesn't know how to hajui kazi yake. Is that is that installation uh, indoors or outdoors? So depending on the type of installation then uh, we use different cables. The local conditions. You have to understand them. So this all this will be, will affect the uh, cable installation, cable construction. You have seen the cons- types of the construction. Mm-hmm. Kuna insulator, kuna conductor, kuna armor, kuna sheath. Mm-hmm. So depending on the type of construction, depending on the, the on the reason why you on why you kazi la ili ambayo unafanya, you will choose different cables. Mm-hmm. Conductors ni tofauti. Mm-hmm. Cable arrangement. Mm-hmm. Those conductors might be a single core. Mm-hmm. Kama for single phase wires might be three core. I'm a four core for three phase wires. Mm. The insulation, which type of insulation are you using? Mm. Will it be able to withstand the ambient and the surrounding temperatures? Mm. Are we together? The atmosphere. Mm. So depending on the cable construction, then you can be able to choose the different type of cable. Now, cable operation. Mm. The insulation of that cable should be able to withstand the, st- the voltage stresses voltage insulation in Arabica. No, it should have a high dielectric strength. So when you choose the insulation, yeah, we choose it based on the face-to-face voltage. Yeah. 
So it should be able to withstand those voltage stresses during normal and abnormal operating conditions. Siete kukiwa na shida kidogo, voltage is shoot kidogo above labda normal operating conditions ni 100%. It shoot kidogo ifike 150 kwa sababu voltage surges and then your insulation fails. No, it should be able to withstand those abnormal and normal operating conditions. Cable size, this is one of the most important conditions. But cable size in itself can be a very different topic. It can be it's a big it's a big topic now the major factors that you consider when choosing on determining cable size you need the current carrying capacity of your of your cable your voltage regulation of that cable the short circuiting of that cable will determine the cable size when i mean current current the current current the current carrying capacity you'll find that the, the different regulation bodies kwa mfano the most common regulation body ambayo inatumika sana inaitwa NEC NEC this is the national 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 electrical code this is the the, the code that that regulates the type of installation we use the type of wire we use the tables that that uh, are produced by NEC, kama they are certified by NEC, that you as an electrical engineer, kama the electrical body should follow. Vile kuna KEBS, kuna hiyo NEC, lakini NEC is an international organization. That code is international. It doesn't apply to Kenya, it applies to everywhere in the world. So that NEC, uh, NEC that code pub has tables that list the current, the current, current capacity for different cables. Hmm? Are you together? Tuko pamoja ama unaona class imeridhia so watu tuko nao tuko pamoja. Voltage regulation. Those codes specify that the voltage drop should not be more than 5% of your total voltage. If you have loads ambazo zina rotate kama motors then the voltage ambayo iko steady the steady voltage and the voltage when you start those rotating you should check those voltages kwa sababu when you, you when you start a machine then you will find that kutakuwa na peak in voltage and then when that machine reaches steady state then inashuka that voltage becomes steady as well now short short circuit short circuit rating your cable should be able to withstand damage short circuit current without uh, getting damaged before your fault is fixed then your cable should be able to withstand that uh, current and that voltage so all these factors can be used to determine your cable size we have calculations that are very necessary yeah, that um, we we do but because we don't we are not uh, uh, it's not a must to calculate them in our in our in our, in our, in our unit and we don't do that now when you determine cable size kama why i says there are some rules that you have to follow and these are some of the most important ones that are that are necessary we had talked about uh, workshop layout na tukasema kwamba when you are, you as a good uh, manager you as a good business owner you have to take into consideration your future prospect of expanding when you when you when you when you put your workshop uh, when ukipanga workshop yako the same case eh, when you are choosing a cable a cable size then you have to take into account at least 20 to 50 yeah, percent for for more huh? 50 to 20 to 50 percent more yeah, size yeah, for emergency purposes for additional uh, purposes for future expansion purposes so you should be able to you consider in your calculation at least 20 percent to 50 percent more the voltage drop should be between 1.25 to 2.2 let's say up to 5% mm-hmm. between the point of from your main to your final circuit mm-hmm. the supply voltage yeah, the final circuit when we say for final circuit 1.25 for the supply voltage to 2.5 but it's usually given up to 5% mm-hmm. you should your, your, the cable the voltage that you are supplying yeah, is hypothesized more than 5% of that total voltage otherwise could take on a shida the cable size that you choose should be able to 
to withstand the ambient temperatures. Remember, when you pass a current within a conductor, heat is produced. So the, most, the, the larger the cable, the more heat is produced. So that cable should be in such a way that it can be, it can be able to dissipate that heat. It can be able to uh, release that heat. So when you have, uh, when you're choosing a cable then, you should also take into consideration uh, something known as the temperature factor. We have tables that, uh, tables that give that, uh, that factor. So come on, find your calculations, then come a temperature comes into play, then you have to correct that temperature. Wiring system. Wiring, there are very many types of wiring system. Kuna overhead, kuna underground. So when you're choosing a wiring system, then this cable size, you have to consider the, the, the cable size about a tabuo. Usendo kaka cable zambazo ni 1,000, let's say 10 meters in diameter, alafu unazifanya overhead wiring system. Unaenda kuweka juu ya ceiling cable ambayo ni 10 meters in, in diameter. Right? Together, those are some of the, 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 the factors you consider when choosing cable size. And so once you come up with, uh, once you umeushajua all those factors and you are able to calculate the cable size. What happens is the most important, the newer voltage, the voltage drop. Once you calculate the voltage drop, then it is easier to factor in those other factors and come up with an appropriate cable size. Mm -hmm.